Hey YouTubers, it's John here again from John's DIY Playground and Merry Christmas to everybody out there. I hope Santa was good to you all and this video finds you all in good health. Today I'm talking about something that probably Santa may have brought many of you or your sons or daughters. Um, these are some very small quadcopters, some people call them drones. I don't consider these two drones because to me a drone has to have some level of autom you know, autonomous control with GPS. So these do not. These are drones or quadcopters that you can buy in let's say the $50 to $75 US range at this time in calendar year 2015. So I've been flying this uh, Saima X5C for a month or two now. Um, it's about a hundred gram weight total um, with the battery installed. It also has a camera on board, not for real time video, but for taping and then watching later. And it's uh, okay for outdoor use. It's also okay for indoor use, but it's a little bit big for indoors, but it's good to train indoors in my opinion with this. Um, again, weighing 100 grams, fully loaded, it falls below the new FAA ruling where if you have a drone or quadcopter that weighs 250 grams or more, starting by the end of this year and running into the early part of February of this year, there's going to be, of 2016, there's going to be a mandatory registration of all quadcopters and drones at 250 grams and above. I'll include a link in my information below so that you can see more uh, about this new rule. So. Please do that if your quad or drone is above 250 grams because it can mean significant uh, fines if uh, you are caught operating without your drone or quadcopter being registered. Now the other quad I have is a fairly new one I got. It's called a Quad Drone VC. I'm not sure exactly who the manufacturer is of it, um, but it's a um, very lightweight drone, way under 100 grams. Um, smaller lithium ion battery, um, 500 milliamp hour versus 300 milliamp hour. And uh, I just want to make some general statements about drones in this category for you that may be new to this uh, hobby. Um, number one, it's uh, easy to crash. <laughs> it takes a while to learn. You will crash a lot, so don't feel bad if you are crashing, no matter what your previous uh, radio control experience might be. Um, but it's all fun and part of the game. I highly recommend if you have prop guards on your particular quad that you install them at least while you're learning. Um, also, a lot of quads have what's called either a low control mode or a high control mode. For example, this switch on this uh, smaller one has a middle position and a high position for slow or fast control. And that's how responsiveness the turning is on, this, on your drone. Um, another thing to know is props will break even with the prop guards on. So my recommendation is to be ready with spare props. Um, usually the quads will come with spare props, but it's a good idea right now to order more spare props. So go to some of the sites that I'm gonna link in my uh, information below and try to find props for your helicopter. You can get them from China very cheap, but the downside is the shipping takes a really long time and we're talking three, four weeks or even more. But when they come in at 50 cents a piece or so, then it's worth it. Um, it might be even less than that, depending on your make and model. So try and get some spare props. Um, another thing to know about props. On quadcopters, the propellers spin in the same direction on opposite axes. So this one and this one spin, let's say, counterclockwise. And then this one and this one will spin counterclockwise. So really important when you're... Um, replacing propellers that you note how the blade looks as far as its pitch. Sometimes they're marked with A and B on the uh, propellers um, uh, in the molding. So you look really closely, you'll see small letters in the molding of the marking on the prop. So that's really, really important. Otherwise your drone won't fly properly when you put in the new uh, propeller and try to take off. It won't take off correctly. Um, another thing is if you're going to buy motors, same thing. You need to make sure your motor, if you're going to replace it, is turning the same direction as the previous one that you're replacing. And DC motors, which is pretty much what all these use, are reversible if you reverse the wires. So you need to replace the wiring properly and you need to 
make sure again the, the spinning in the correct direction is intended originally so that it performs as it should. I can do um, videos out there for you um, on soldering technique I think is not covered very well for drone replace uh, motor replacement but there are some motor replacement videos out there so look those up on YouTube otherwise if you request it I can uh, take one of these apart when I do a motor repair and show you what the basics are of that. Okay, finally I want to let you guys know after a while it's possible with these cheaper drones that a motor is going to burn out. Uh, let's say if you're using it every day for a few flights a day. Could be a couple weeks, could be a few weeks. They're just not really great build quality. Um, so order those motors too if you do have the skill to solder and replace the motors. Um, and get more motors sent and shipped now so that when the motor burns out you'll be ready. Let me demonstrate on my Saima uh, X5C1, which does have a currently a burned out motor in the lower right. Um, I'll turn it on. And I'll get my controller and my hands out of the way so I don't get chopped here. But uh, here's what it looks like when a motor is burned out. It wants to spin, but it just won't. You can even try to help it, but it's not spinning at the speed it needs to be. So even though it's spinning, it is a burned out motor, so I will be replacing that motor. So one last tip I wanted to give everybody is, if you think the motor is burned out, please check one other thing on the quad if your quad is set up like mine on the Cymax 5C. There's a small gear that is attached to the motor here, the motor shaft. That gear can pop up and disengage from this larger wheel that's actually spinning the prop. So before you go out and say, oh, I got to go and replace the motor, check that gear. You might just have to push down on that tiny little gear a little bit and re-engage the bigger gear, and that could fix your problem. So check that as well. So hope this all helped for you today. I'll have a lot of uh, links and information in the box below this video for you. Um, if you did find this helpful, please like or subscribe to my video so you can see when other ones come out. Um, please leave your comments. I'll try to answer them as best I can. And thanks for watching John's DIY Playground.